God is trans. All y'all Christians out here losing your mind when it comes to trans rights, which is stupid, and you should be for the marginalized. But beyond that, your God is literally trans. In Genesis 1, it talks about let's make humanity in our image, the I form of they. The term spirit is a feminine word, importance for the whole, you know, Holy Spirit. And God is likened to father and mother all throughout the text. God's pronouns are literally they, they're them. How else are you going to talk about the Trinity? And beyond that, verbatim, in Galatians, it says, in Christ, there is neither male nor female. And in ancient Israel, there were eight genders. Eight. Christians, where do you get off being transphobic? Stop. God is trans. That's the claim. And this content creator provides six reasons why we should take this claim seriously. So let's pull out the red pen and take a look at each. First, in Genesis 1, God says, let us make man in our image. See, there it is. Doesn't this demonstrate that God is trans and that God's pronouns are they, them? Well, not so fast. While this passage may refer to the Trinity, many scholars take this to be referring not to the Trinity, but to the divine counsel mentioned in Psalm 82 verse one. Furthermore, in the very next verse, it says, so God created man in his own image, in the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. It doesn't say they created them, but he created them. Notice the singular masculine pronoun. Second, this content creator states that God's pronouns are they, them. Now there actually is some truth to this. After all, the Trinity is a plurality of persons, father, son, and spirit. And when referring to multiple persons, it's entirely appropriate to use the plural they or them. But that's precisely because there are three distinct persons, not because God's gender identity is trans. Interestingly, as we just read a moment ago, the pronouns most often used of God in scripture are not they, them, but he, him. And if God revealed those pronouns, maybe we should use them. Of course, God is an ungendered spiritual being. Unlike human beings, God is not the kind of being where gender categories apply. That's because unlike humans, God isn't embodied, God is spirit. Third, this content creator points to the fact that the word spirit in Hebrew is a feminine word. While it's true that the word spirit in Hebrew is grammatically feminine, the word spirit in Greek is grammatically neuter. So if the Hebrew word makes the Holy Spirit a she, then the Greek word makes the Holy Spirit an it. Here's the point. Grammatical gender is just that, grammatical. Interestingly, in the Bible, the spirit is referred to using masculine, feminine, and neuter language depending on the context. And none of this demonstrates that God is trans. Fourth, this content creator says God is likened to a father and mother. Absolutely. No argument there, but these are similes and metaphors. For example, in Hosea, God is likened to a mother bear robbed of her cubs. But this text isn't saying God is a mother any more than it's saying God is a bear. Fifth, this creator cites Galatians 3.28, which states, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is no male and female. But keep reading. Paul isn't teaching modern gender ideology here. Rather, Paul is teaching that no matter what your ethnicity, your social status, or your sex, we are all one in Christ Jesus. And finally, this creator mentions that ancient Israel had eight genders. Now this is terribly misleading. Ancient Israel understood the sex binary of male and female, as well as a number of sex aberrations. These are not genders, but disorders in sex development, like having ambiguous or both sex characteristics. Of course, these sex disorders are not the same as modern transgender ideation, and to conflate the two is horribly misleading. But even if ancient Israel had a progressive view of gender hundreds of years before our contemporary culture, so what? Ancient Israel also worshiped a golden calf. Not everything ancient Israel said and did was good and true. At the end of the day, this video amounts to a desperate attempt to anachronistically impose a modern gender ideology on an ancient culture and an ancient God that never operated in those terms.